All right, this is lesson 6.1, radian measure. Um, radians are another way that we can determine an angle. Um, usually, or prior to this lesson, we have defined angles in degrees. Well, radians is an entirely different way to measure an angle. And the definition of what a radian is, or one radian, is it's the angle covered by a certain arc length in a circle with a defined radius. And that's pretty confusing, but uh, it might be easier to understand what one radian is. One radian is the arc length, or the curved part of a circle, uh, equal to its own radius, or the circle's own radius. So let's try to define this one more time. Let's say we had a circle that had a radius of one centimeter. One radian would be how much or what angle you cover rotating around a circle uh, one centimeter. Since our radius is one centimeter, the arc length one centimeter, when the arc length equals the radius, what you have or what angle you cover to cover that one centimeter is one radian. Um, we're going to show how much or what that is in degrees, um, but the neat thing about this definition is that it doesn't matter what the radius of the circle is. If the radius of the circle was seven centimeters, then one radian would just be um, how or the angle that you're covering when you cover an arc length of seven centimeters. So it's always in proportion. Whatever your arc length is, as long as it's equal to your radius, that angle will always be one radian. Um, so why change the definition of what an angle is? Why use radians? Well, arc length, or the distance around, is in a unit. In this case, we use centimeters. Um, and radius is in its same units. And to find an angle in radians, we take the arc length and divide it by the radius. In this case, the arc length was 7, the radius was 7, so when we divided, we got 1 or 1 radian. But what also happens when you divide things or quantities with the same unit, those units divide away, and you're left with something that's unitless. So that's the value of radians. It's not in degrees. Um, it's in a unitless quantity. It's just a number um, that doesn't have units, and it's very valuable for certain mathematics and physics applications. So how many degrees is a single radian? Well, to figure that out, we need to consider, scroll down here, consider a arc length covered by rotating around an entire circle. So. Let's say we have a circle with a radius. And if we wanted to rotate around the entire circle and end up back at the beginning, we would have rotated 360 degrees. Our arc length the length of the whole distance around a circle has another name in this case. It's the circumference, since we're rotating around the entire circle. What's the circumference? Well, the circumference is 2 pi r, or that's the equation of a circumference. Above, we said that an angle in radians is defined by this equation, arc length divided by radius. If we rotate a whole circle, so around an entire circle, we've rotated 360 degrees, or one whole circumference. And a circumference is just 2 times pi times r. So I'm going to replace arc length with 2 times pi times r, since we went around the whole circle. And now I'm going to divide that by r. We have a common term. Our r's can divide. And we're left with an angle of 2 pi. This is one complete revolution. In degrees, the angle that we covered by one complete revolution was not 2 pi, it was 360 degrees. So now we have a relationship. Our relationship is that 360 degrees, this is degrees, equals 2 pi. And this is our angle in radians. Let's say angle in degrees. 
In degrees, we covered 360. In radians, we covered 2 pi, which is a number like 6.28, but we'll leave it as 2 pi. We won't evaluate it. So in radians, we covered 2 pi. In degrees, we covered 360 degrees. So how are they related, or how? what is one radian? Try to generalize. Well, if we want to solve for one radian, we want this side, the angle in radians, to say 1. How we can turn this side into 1 is by dividing by 2 pi because 2 pi divided by 2 pi is 1. Anything we do to one side, we have to do to the other side. So 360 divided by 2 pi. We can reduce that fraction. It's 180 over pi. And if you divide 180 by pi in your calculator, it's 57.3 degrees. So one radian is 57.3 degrees. The, what you'll end up using more often is not what one radian is, but it's what an entire rotation is, or what 360 is. The relationship of 360 equals 2 pi is the relationship you're going to use more often, or even the relationship that, um, oh, well, it's not there, that pi is equal to 180 is the relationship you're probably going to use more often. So degrees and radians, the most common relationship, let's use that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Now radians aren't the unit, but we write it to remind you that that is in radians. And does that make sense? Well, if 2 pi, one whole rotation around a circle, is 360 degrees, half a rotation, 180, would be half of 2 pi, which is just pi. So there's your relationship. 180 degrees is just pi radians, or 3.14 radians. How can we use that to convert? Well, if you want to convert from degrees to radians, you multiply by a conversion factor. And that conversion factor is this relationship written with what you want on top, we want radians, divided by what you have on the bottom, 180 degrees. To convert from radians to degrees, we're going to multiply by what we want, we want degrees, by 180 degrees, over what you have, pi. And if you multiply by these conversion factors, you can switch from degrees to radians, something that we'll practice doing and then hopefully something that you'll be able to do fairly quickly in your head. And we're going to work with common angles, just like we did when we worked in degrees, like we always were using 30 and 60 and 45 and 90 and 180 and 270 and 360. Those were really common ones. And there's really common radian measures that we'll end up using a lot too, like 2 pi, that's 360, or pi, that's 180, or pi over 2, which is half of pi, which is 90 degrees or pi over 4, which is 45. And you'll start to see these ones come up all the time, and then you'll be able to quickly relate them from degrees to radians, and you won't have to actually do the mathematical conversion. But how do we convert? Well, we multiply by these conversion factors. So let's try a couple really quickly and see if we can convert. I'll do one, and then I'll get you to try the other one and check your answer. So I'll do the first ones. Um, convert 20 degrees to radians. So given 20 degrees, we want to multiply by what we want, which is radians, pi, over, divide by what we have, 180. 20 times pi divided by 180 is just 20 pi over 180. And if we reduce that, we can divide top and bottom by 20. We get pi over 9. And pi over 9 is a value that you can leave it to. That's the exact value. If you want to find what it's approximately equal to, you can do pi divided by 9 and get a decimal, which is 0 0.35. Usually we leave it as the exact answer. Exact approximate. Okay, I'll get you to try B. To convert from radians to degrees, it's pretty much the same thing, except the conversion factor is backwards. So it's 5 pi over 6 is how many radians we have. So we want to multiply that by what we want, which is 180 degrees, over, dividing by what we have, pi. 
if we multiply straight across, we end up with 5 times 180. That's challenging to do, but 180 divided by 6 is easier to do. That's 30. And pi divided by pi is 1. So we've got 5 times 30 degrees, essentially. If you plug that all into your calculator, you'll end up with 150 degrees. The pi's divide away. 5 times 180 divided by 6 is 150 degrees. You can do the same thing. Oops, I guess that's example A, not example B. Uh, you can do the same thing if the radians are written as a decimal. You would just type or write 1.75 and multiply it by 180 over pi and see what you come up with. In that case, you're only going to be able to get a approximate answer. You're only going to be able to come up with a decimal unless you want to turn 1.75 into a fraction, then you can come up with an exact value. Uh, that's it for what radians are and how to convert between the two of them. Try the B parts of both those examples and check your answers on the course website. There's a part two to the video and it's showing you how to do example three, which is angular velocity.